I'm John Kutch, and uh, I, along with a, several other folks like uh, Vince and Tammy out there, started the Thorium Energy Alliance uh, about uh, eight years ago now. And uh, <clears throat> so I am still the self-appointed executive director. No, <clears throat> no better way to get that title than to give it to yourself. So we're back. <clears throat> we're back here in California. Uh, so this is the seventh big conference we've had. We've had scores of small little conferences at, at uh, universities, and, and uh, Jim and I tallied up how many trips to Washington, D.C. We're, we're up to just over 70, and, uh, <clears throat> and that's a lot of expense, and that comes out of uh, the vast majority of that comes out of our own pockets. And so we are doing our best <clears throat> to spread the word about uh, uh, thorium and obviously the related subject of rare earths. Uh, the, uh, uh, but, <clears throat> you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to see the forest for the trees sort of thing. And it, in uh, the last seven, eight years, it's like, well, what the hell, man? I don't see any reactors <laughs> anywhere. You know, I don't, what have we gotten done in seven years? And... Uh, I think uh, it's actually pretty good. I think this year uh, there's actually quite a bit of news to, to tell. Uh, there's uh, real legitimate companies now like Thorcon and, and uh, uh, Terrestrial Energy that are actually putting real business cases together and doing real work to actually forward progress. Uh, so that's, that's exciting. Uh, and our first speaker We'll talk about uh, his work in that same area. So that should give you guys a lot of hope. <clears throat> but enough of that hope stuff. <laughs> we, when, we, uh, when we look over the, at the end of the last year, this uh, article came out, what would it really take to uh, reverse climate change? And it was written as sort of the, uh, uh, the obituary for Google.org. Google.org was their, was their big push back in 2007, 2008, you know, RE less than C, which was renewable energy less than coal. Um, they weren't trying to buy cheap energy. Google had plenty of money. They didn't need cheap energy. They wanted clean energy. And what they more wanted than anything else was to get rid of carbon because they, they feel that uh, excess carbon in the atmosphere is causing a lot of issues. And so their real big thing was, let's get rid of carbon. And they realized, once they sat there and studied it, was that electricity production is only about 30% of where the CO2 comes from. The rest is cement and fertilizer production and other industrial processes. That's where the, the carbon dioxide. So making, there was nothing, if you read the article, the ridiculous lengths they went to to try and make cheap solar, cheap wind, cheap thermal energy, uh, uh, geothermal. And they, they finally realized it could cost zero, and the net effect would be de minimis to actually solving the CO. And at the end of it, oh, they couldn't quite bring themselves to say the actual word. But at the end of it, they say, what we need is a clean, safe energy source that could provide vast amounts of high temperature energy. Essentially, they're, what were they describing? You know, they were describing a molten salt type reactor or some type of Gen 4 reactor. Google puts out a report, spends $850 million, and uh, <laughs> spends $850 million, and no one, you know, everyone's screaming. I, I go to this conference, you know, Bloomberg, New Energy Finance, it's like a $4,000 a person conference. Got to uh, t speak with these folks. Uh, there's a, a group called uh, Nuclear Matters that you may have uh, heard of that uh, helped cover uh, some of the cost and, and some very generous support of Bloomberg. Uh, but I went there and, you know, I did not realize that the vast majority of it was going to be, you know, how do you finance solar and how do you finance wind? And uh, uh, you can see up there one of the, one of the most uh, damning in indictment uh, phrases that some guy was up there and he's like, I can't believe... Look at how great the residential uptake of solar is. It's just going gangbusters. But look at businesses. They don't invest in this at all. 
There's no rooftop solar on, you know, there should be rooftop solar on all these businesses. And I wanted to scream, you know, it's like 3,000 people. I wanted to scream, like, because businesses have to justify the money they spend, you know. If you're a homeowner, you know, you can do it because it makes you feel shiny, happy, and good, and you can pay, you know, 20x what electricity costs. That's great. You want to do that, show off to your neighbors, that's good. But a business has to, you know, shareholder value, all that good stuff. They have to justify, and there's no... There's no, uh, there's almost no conceivable way to justify the uh, the investments in, and then the final really tacky thing is that these people were all this is new energy finance, which is excellent. It's excellent that they included nuclear, but the takeaway, the takeaway from that was that they were trying to finance these vast, these big, you know, industrial installations of wind and and solar. But probably one of the most fiendish things is that they love companies like Solar City and stuff, because what they're doing is they're 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 financing. They're essentially saying we're going to put the solar on your roof for free. Well, it's not free because they get they get on your mortgage, right? And now you are saddled with them. You can't discharge that loan without settling up with them first. And you want to say, hey, I want to pay for that twenty thousand dollars solar installation. They say, oh, well, you owe us $80,000 because that's the extended what we thought we were going to make off of you. And uh, so it's, it's diabolical, and it, you can ask a couple of the finance guys in the room. That is one of the biggest things going on in Wall Street right now. One of the things that's making them loopy, long strings of drool is the idea that they can, that they can this is like a, a, a subprime financing you know, of the of of uh, renewable energy. They are able to get their hooks into your mortgage and they got you. And so you're always going to pay that electric bill. So, so much for big, bad, centrally uh, uh, distributed energy. You know, this distributed energy is, is just an utter appalling scam. So, uh, I ran across this picture uh, and I love it very much because it's exactly what we're doing. Uh, we're you know, we only have one little boat that we sit on, you know, planet Earth, and, uh, and we're sawing it up pretty good and feeding it into the engine. And uh, you can see in the upper right-hand corner there exactly what's going to happen if we keep, uh, keep going the way we're going. And uh, this was a performance artist, as you can imagine, and, and uh, I think he did an excellent job of demonstrating exactly what we're doing. Uh, So you can see there, you know, we are we are burning the furniture, we are burning the the, the planet, and uh, um, and the future can't happen fast enough, you know. The and by that I mean we need to fail quickly. This state, God bless California, I love to visit it, but to live here must be, you know, must shorten your life by five years. This because it is. You know, the most appalling, you know, uh, decisions are being made to shut down San Onofre, to, to shut down Diablo Canyon, you know, the, the, the water issues, all of it together. And for us in this room, especially for us in this room who have to live here, God help you, uh, you know, you have to see every day and you must scream at every media source that you see. It's like, we got an answer for you. <laughs> we got a way to fix this, and uh, so what we what we need to hope. My little talk takeaway from my tiny talk here is that we need to hope that Germany and California and Texas fail in such a spectacular fashion that that they are forced to. Find. It's uh, it's sort of like what Churchill said. You know, Americans never fail to do the right thing after they've exhausted all other possibilities. <laughs> so. <clears throat> And so let's let's hope we can let's hope we can work our way through the pretty shiny glass that makes magic electricity, and let's hope we can work our way through the the spinny little piece of plastic standing in the field, and we can get down to business and uh, and save this uh, save this little world that we have here. So welcome to the future of energy, and uh, do your best to spread the word about this thorium stuff, and. Uh, how we can fix a lot of issues with uh, rare earths. I don't need to tell you that. Some guys coming up after me will tell you that. 
and uh, and also this uh, wonderful uh, reactor technology, uh, the one that the, we all seem to be especially enamored of, the molten salt. But I'll take I'll take most any Gen Four work. Uh, all boats rise with the tide.